Hello everybody, today I'm excited to announce our CSV to JSON L converter. Why is this important? It makes making fine tunes even easier. So now you can take a CSV file, you can convert it to JSON L, and you can fine tune with OpenAI or AI21, all within Riku, all without code. And we're going to show you even how you can make a data set super fast using our Google Sheet integration. So let's get into it. Here is our Google Sheet. You see that it's got the Riku integration because we have this AI menu here. If you are interested in using the Google Sheet integration, you need to come to Riku.ai. You need to either go to integrations down here or connect with Sheets here and you'll load up this page. Here you can learn about our formula, which is equals AI and then brackets. And if you want to connect, you hit this button. You can then copy the sheet with the script already on it, and you can then set it up. So here is one that I've already set up. If I hit AI, I can do show AI sidebar. Here I need to put the details for my account. So I can put my name on the account. I can put the secret key, which I can all find in my profile pop up on the v2 dashboard and i can choose what prompt i want to use if you have closed your google sheet and reopened it these the sidebar will appear empty but the data is actually still saved so don't worry about that the final step with setting up your google sheet integration is choosing the prompt that you want so we predefine some here for you to use within the menu, but you can change them as you like. So you'll see here, we have this prompt parrot, which is something that I put in, and I've put in the unique ID here. How do I find this within Riku? Well, it couldn't be easier. I can choose what I want. I can click on it. So I wanna use this image prompt expander by author, and I am going to choose open well it's going to be open ai da vinci so we're going to be running open ai within our google sheet with this but if we wanted to use gptj if we wanted to use air 21 then we can do all of that i need to click on this and then there is this copy prompt id button i click this it copies the prompt id to my clipboard come back into google sheets and i can paste it here bam it's already there so here i have done that step already so the next step would be to actually create our examples. So I've added heading here, heading prompt and a heading completion. This is very important that you have these two headings because it makes this uh, converter work. So make sure that you have prompt and completion in the first uh, column. That's uh, the first row, sorry. That's uh, super, super important. And we then need our prompt examples. And you're probably wondering, why do I, how do I know about these prompt examples? Well, I can come back into Riku, I can come back to the dashboard, and I can click this edit button to see what goes into this prompt. I see uh, all of the technology information, I see what the temperature was set as, I, I see everything. And I can see here, original, and we have the AI output, original, and we have the AI output, etc., etc. We also have the instruction at the top here, but when we are creating a data set for fine tuning, we do not need to provide the instruction at the top. I will say that again. When we are creating a data set for fine tuning, we do not need to provide the instruction at the top. The reason for this is because if you are providing so much information within a data set and really realistically, you should have 500, 1000, 2000, 5000, maybe even 10,000 examples. The more examples you provide in the data set, the better. We're only doing a data set of 20 for this example because we want it to be super simple and quick for this video. So we are doing 20, but if I was doing this properly, I'd probably try to have a thousand or more. So we've taken our prompts, we've loaded them up. So we've got 20 here, formulas are already, details are already, we're ready to go. Are you ready? So. We then come to our formula. We do equals, we do AI, and then we open our bracket. We need the input field. Where are we gonna get this input field from? Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Well, it's in column A. So we can do A2. That goes yellow, that's great. We then close the bracket, we hit enter, 
bam, we're going to get the completion. This means that it's going to send it in to, into web space over to OpenAI. OpenAI are going to go, hang on a minute, we've got something to do. They're going to see it and they're going to give back the information that we need for the completion. So you'll see here we have it. There is a little bit of repetition in here, but we're not going over the quality of the prompt. We're just doing this for an example and showing you how you can create the data set super quickly. So what I can do now is I can drag this down. I could drag this down to cover all of these. I could drag it down to however many, you know, I could do 100, I could do 200. But I'm just going to do it until here just to show you. So this is going to send all of these at once. So if you are interested in using Google Sheets to do bulk content creation, you know, if you're e-commerce store and you've got multiple products that you need to do, then setting up all of the informations in the different columns and then creating the formula and just sort of spanning it down, you're going to get some really awesome stuff. So I'm just going to do that one more time and it's doing all of these at the same time. It's going bam, 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 bam. Um, and it's super fun. So now we have all of these. If I was doing this properly, I'd go in, I'd edit, you know, I'd tidy it up, I'd get rid of the duplicates, I'd make it as good as it could be. And, you know, creating a data set for a fine tune is, is not a super simple, quick task. You know, if you really want quality and you want it to perform the best that it can, then you should take the time to ensure that every single row is perfect. But this is a quick video, so we're not going to do that. So now we have our prompts, we have our completions, we can go to file, we can go to download, we can go to comma separated file. This is where the magic happens. We want the CSV. We've downloaded the CSV. We can then come in to Riku. We are now wanting to go to our dataset studio. If we wanted to create something here, we can type and type. This is how you can create a data set the manual way. Um, it's a bit slower than using Google Sheets. So you may want to use something that we've added here, which is a CSV to JSON L converter. Looks quite fun to me. We click here, we get this page loading up. If we click here, we get back to this page. So it's super easy to navigate. And what we want to do is we want to load in this CSV file. So we hit that, that's going to upload for us. We can give the data set a name. So we could say prompt parrot. And we can hit convert CSV. When we hit convert CSV, this is going to send it through our system. We go through every single line within the CSV. We then format it in the JSON that is correct for every single line. And we make the JSON L file. So this is a process which takes about one second for each line but it's ready super quickly, especially if you only have 20. And if you talk as much as me, then it's gonna be ready by the time I am ready to actually download it, which is probably gonna be about now. So here it is. You're gonna have all of your data sets here that you have converted from CSV. So, you know, Riku is a really comfortable place to experiment, to build, to deploy, and also enjoy the best of AI. And if I wanted to get the JSONL file from any of my conversions, they would be down here. I'd find the one that I want and I'd hit the download button. If I wanted to delete one of these, I just hit the delete button. So we're going to download today and we have it. That's great. So what I can do now is I can say show this in Finder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in a handy little application called Sublime. And you're probably thinking, Stuart, you've already made your JSONL data set. Why are you opening it up in a text editor? Why do you need to do this if what you've done is so great? And that is a good question and one that I will get to in a moment. So I've noticed a bug, which is typical when you do these things, but it's an easy fix. So I will just fix that now and then we will have the issue not happen in a minute. So if I wanted to check any line of the JSON L, what I would do is I would copy it and I would come to a program like JSON Lint. JSONLint.com, I paste that in, I go validate. 
oh no, I've got an error. Maybe that was intentional. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a bug. Who knows? What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that last uh, little uh, squiggly thing at the end. And I'm going to do validate JSON. Okay, great. We seem to have found the issue. Perfect. So then I need to fix this for every single one. So I'm going to do this quick without anyone seeing. So we do find all. Uh probably the best way is going to be find all of these delete all of these and then add one of these perfect so that fixes that problem and now getting back to the main part of the video is why are we in a text editor well we're in a text editor because we have our prompt here and we have our completion here but you'll notice there is no space there is no line break there is no stop sequence there is nothing here so there is no separator between the original dog drinking from a bowl and our completion dog drinking from a bowl of milk painting by Gaston Buzier, blah, 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 blah. And we want that to be better. So how do we make that better? Well, we need to edit it. And this is something that you could do within the CSV uh, creation stage yourself. So you could put line breaks, you could put the stop sequence, um, there are various ways that you could do it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same format that we had in the prompt. So I'm going to do a line break, do our stop sequence, the hash, 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 and then I'm going to do a line break because then we know the text is ready to be written on that new line. So how do we bulk edit this? And you probably saw it when I was just fixing that bug, maybe intentional, maybe not. So I'm going to hit command F. If I'm on a Windows machine, it will be control F. And I very much recommend everybody who is interested in data sets and building out uh, JSONL files or just sort of anyone who plays with text on a regular basis to get uh, Sublime because it's really awesome and super simple to use. And I am going to do uh, quotation mark and I'm going to do completion. And then I'm going to do quotation mark and then I'm going to do my colon. And then that is going to map every single completion within this data set. And the reason why I've included the quotation marks is so that we don't get any of these if there are any unintentionally within the text itself. Then I'm going to hit this find all button. I'm going to hit the left arrow key. I'm going to hit the left arrow key. I'm going to hit the left arrow key. And you guessed it. I'm going to hit the left arrow key. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do line break. And remember, we are in JSON. So I wouldn't just press enter because pressing enter is going to screw everything up. And line break when we're dealing with JSON is all about the uh, backslash N. So we do backslash N. And then we have our hash, hash, hash. And then we do another one. And that is perfect. So now we have our prompt, which is original dog drinking from a bowl. Then we have a new line. Then we have our hash, hash, hash. Then we have a new line. And this is where we would hit generate. And this is where the completion would come. That's exactly what we're after. So that is perfect. Very happy with that. I would hit save on this so control s if you are on windows command s for me on a mac and i can then cross this off because i don't need to look at this anymore we can come back to riku we can come back to fine tuning and we can create a new fine tune let's do it so we want to upload our jsonl file we're going to upload this one which is the one that we just edited we could say, what do we want to give the name? I'm going to call it prompt parrot. Uh, this is a basic 20 example model for expanding text prompts for image AI. It will help users to create better images by helping them be more descriptive. And we can choose our technology, whether we want OpenAI or AI21. 
Let's go for OpenAI for now. We can choose whether we want Ada, Babbage, Curie, or Da Vinci. Um, it's a demonstration video, so let's keep things cheap and do Ada. But if I wanted a really quality uh, fine tune, I'd probably go for Curie or above. Da Vinci would probably be overkill for this, especially if we were providing 500, 1,000, 2,000 examples. Curie would do it really, really well. Um, but for the sake of this, we're going to do adder. We're not going to change the number of epochs because we don't need to. And we can hit create fine tune model. And this is where the magic works and we don't get an error and I don't have to redo the video again and again. So here we go. It's loading along the top. You'll see your fine tune has been sent to OpenAI for processing. We have set up an automatic check an hour from now. And if that is successful, you will receive an email saying your fine tune is successful and it is ready to use. So that is super fun, super funky. It's going through the system with OpenAI now. Maybe I will do a quick follow up video for this where I use that in the future, but I have to wait an hour now for that to happen. Remember, if I wanted to use that fine tune within the Riku Playground, I just go new prompt technology i'd come in i change this to fine-tuned models i'd come in i'd find prompt power it's already loaded up here but if i tried to use it now it would not work because it hasn't finished training on OpenAI. remember you've got to give it a little bit of time and i'd think about what i needed to put in here so you'll see this was the original prompt that we created the fine-tuned model had the prompt and the completions without this instruction so what would I need to put in to use this? This is often something that people get wrong. They try and put too much information into the actual fine tune model when they want to call it. But the beauty of a fine tune is you don't need to provide any of this. So if I wanted to run this fine tune model myself, I can delete everything here. <sighs> it's all gone, which is great. And I can put in just what I need. So we're just following the same format we'd have the original and then we'd have you know like i don't know hippie dancing with a guitar and then i'd put my line break then i'd put my hash 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 then i'd put my line break and at this point i'd hit generate i check out the stop sequence that is great for us we got line break hash 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 that is perfect I'd check if there is anything else that I wanted to change. Do I want to change the temperature? Maybe. Do I want to change the top P? Probably not if I'm changing the temperature. Output tokens look great. Frequency penalty and presence penalty I don't need to worry about. At this point, I would hit generate. I'd be ready to go. But we are waiting for that fine tune to happen. And we're going to continue to wait because, you know, Unfortunately, I don't think the video is going to be good if we just sit here for an hour and I sing you karaoke. So we'll call it a day here, but I hope this video has been super helpful for you. We've gone over how you can add a CSV to, uh, to Riku, convert it into a JSONL, how we've gone in, how we've edited it to get it into a format that makes a really good uh, fine tune. The importance of leaving like a line break or your line break and your stop sequence between your prompt and the completion and also touching on some of the things which are important with our google sheet integration and how you need to provide the prompt and completion titles for these two remember the equals ai formula is incredibly powerful especially if you're doing e-commerce products you know a bunch of things and using it like this to create fine tunes in in super quick time with your data sets wowza we've just opened up a whole new way of doing things so if you've enjoyed this video if you've enjoyed ai and you love playing with image ai text ai you love building prompts you love building data sets and you're looking to deploy ai into your own systems or your own company or just have fun with the technology then consider signing up for riku today we are the central place online for everything ai playing enjoying teaching and learning all about the best stuff and having a place where it's all stored and easy, easily accessible for you. So consider signing up at ricky.ai today and we'll see you in the next video. We've got a lot of exciting stuff to come. Thank you.